admire and admit. Ask questions. <clears throat> Find out what they believe spiritually. Find out if they go to church anymore, where they're at. And instead of arguing with them, admire what you can about what they believe. Remember Paul in Acts 17? He didn't start to fight with the, the uh, Greek Epicureans and Stoics and pagans. He finds something he agrees with. Yeah, I see you're very religious. It's all these altars. You have one to the unknown God. I'm going to talk to you about him today. He quotes one of their pagan poets. So find what you get. Well, you're a Mormon. Man, I appreciate your, your focus on the family and your intense cardio from all the bicycle. I mean, I mean find, find what you agree with. You're a Muslim? Let me tell you, are you, are you praying so many times a day? Five pillars of Islam, you guys are committed to what you do. You know, admire something you can about what they believe. And then admit. Admit the reason you're a Christian is you're so messed up you need Jesus to save you. And then tell your story. And then tell a story. It's really simple. Ask, admire, and admit. I'm also going to give you a website to help you. Uh, it's our website, dare to share.org. We have tools and training and resources. Uh, most of them free, available for teenagers. But when I was a pastor, it's the same basic stuff I used in training adults. I'm going to be preaching at Promise Keepers coming up July 31st and August 1st in Dallas, Texas. I'm the last talk, and I'm going to be training all the men at you know, Dallas State and how to share the gospel of Christ and give them to the stroke of good night to do it. The same stuff I'm going to use to train adults. I encourage you to go to DarryShare.org, use some of the free tools and resources. My question is, will you do that 48 hour challenge? And here's my, here's my 48 hours from the time you get home, we begin that gospel conversation. And then will you bring those stories back to your CBMC group? Good, bad, or other. And let the prayers begin. Because John was right. We're in a war. We're in a war. One of my uncles was a, was a war hero, and I'll close with this illustration. My uncle Dave uh, went to Vietnam. He was a crew chief of a rescue helicopter. And he would fly into hot zones where the war was still going on, and he would rescue soldiers. And my, my, my Uncle Dave was only there for one tour, one year. But he hardly ever slept. He went on missions day and night. He got 40 medals and commendations in one tour. 40 medals and commendations. Including the Soldier's Cross, the, distinguished, uh, the Soldier's Medal, the Distinguished Flying Cross, several Purple Hearts. <coughs> he carries around with him a vial of shrapnel that was taken from his body. And whenever he talks to somebody who's anti-American, who lives in America, he takes it out and starts shaking it. And they're like, what is that? Because that's the sound of the price of your freedom. And then he tells them the story and they just shut up. Right? We, a couple years ago, we were uh, with my Uncle Dave at an Italian restaurant in Denver. And he, he says, you know, I've been shot five times when I was in the bar. I didn't know that because I've got shrapnel on my head. And I'm here's the vial. Okay. And he goes, let me show you the bullet holes. It's kind of awkward when somebody, you know, <laughs> pulling up their pants and, you know, all this stuff, showing me all these bullet holes, five bullet holes. And he goes, oh, yeah, I got bayonet. What? He pulls up his shirt. Sure, there's a four-inch bayonet scar on his stomach. I'm like, what happened? He goes, well, I flew into a hot zone. I saw them taking a VC, taking an American soldier uh, out into the jungle. I just ran after him. He goes, they ambushed me. He goes, I was tackled by three VC. They took my gun away. They laid me out on the ground. One stood on one arm. One stood on the other arm. The other stood above me with an AK-47 and a, and a bayonet and started gunning me. I'm like, what did you do? He goes, I prayed to God and kicked him in the groin. I'm like, that, those phrases don't usually see me go together, but it's like a different situation. He goes, Greg, was a miracle. Those two VC jumped off my arms. The other guy I kicked, he dropped the gun. He goes, that AK-47 flipped around and landed in my arms, just like this. It was a miracle. I killed them all. I rescued my friend. And we were back in the chopper, uh, chopper and I flew another six hours. I go, what about your scar? He goes, duct taped it. I'm like, man, you are Rambo. I'm just serious. You are Rambo. Uh, and I, I asked him a couple months ago, Dave, why, why did you fly day and night? Why did you never sleep? How could you possibly get 40 medals and commendations in one tour? Why? He goes, right? 
When I went into Vietnam, I was a little bit older than the other soldiers. Some of them were literally teenagers, many of them. And I looked at them as my kids. He goes, let me ask you a question, Greg. What would you do to rescue your kids? What would you do to rescue the next generation? And I could not help but think of rescuing the next generation with the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said, you will do whatever it takes. You would do whatever it took. Let me ask you, what are you willing to do to rescue the lost, the young and the old, with the gospel of Jesus Christ? Because you, in many ways, are the crew chief of the rescue out project. And every day you fly into the house home with a message that can save them. Whatever it takes. Just like those four men of belief, whatever it takes. Just like Jesus. I want to pray for